What's going on, YouTube? What it do? What it do? I'm gonna uh, try to do a quick video, real quick, because people been asking me some things about this whole little fishing thing or whatever. So I'm gonna break down some things real quick. You know, you can pause the video and look at some of the stuff that I use, and or you can be your own, just buy whatever the, whatever you want to buy. Let's just say that. Um. You gotta excuse me if I'm coughing because I got a little cold or whatever. But anyway, without further ado, first of all, let me see. Let me break this down. This is an open face reel. It's an open face. You flip the bell, and you know a lot of times you just turn the handle on some. It'll flip right back over the click. It'll lock in. All right. This is an open face. This is a bait cast. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Both of them are decent reels. But once you start fishing, if you're a beginner, a lot of people that use bass, bass fishing, you know, they use bait cast. Some people, freshwater, saltwater, they use them, redfish, trouts, whatever. But anyway, this is a a bait cast. This is an open face. You know, sometimes you got closed faces. The zip codes, 808s or whatever, push button that you can push the button and throw it real far and all like that. A lot of people use them. Um, a lot of people don't use them. To me, I would never buy that in my life, but it depends on what you're into. Anyway, open face, set in the drag. Let me tell you what the drag is. A lot of people don't know what the drag is. The drag is when you hook into a big fish and a lot of times they pop the line and a lot of times your drag is not set correctly or I don't know how I want to say that. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to set the drag. When you go to pull your line and you see it's not moving, like I'm pulling real, real tight. You know, you put tension on the line. But see, when you turn the top, when you turn the top of that, of the reel it'll like turn back and forth if you tighten it all the way down that means you're taking the drag off your pole but if you loosen it up a little bit <coughs> if you loosen it up a little bit you'll hear when you pull it it'll click a lot of them have like a little dean to it like dee -dee 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 -dee, but most of the time it'll be clicking so I'm gonna let you hear it so like if a big fish is on the line and it's pulling and he's taking drag, you know, he's taking that line with him. He's taking drag, taking drag. But a lot of times people lose fish and it don't be the fish fault, it be the fisherman's fault. So like, you got it tight or loose. I like to have mine kind of tight and loose, the way it still got pressure on it, not too much pressure where he'll pop. So that's what drag is. But that's how you set the drag on an open face. Set the drag on a bait caster is this your normal reel right now. But this, the, the next uh, spinning handle on the inside, that's just how you set your drag on that. So to tighten it all the way forward, see that it's not moving at all. You loosen it up. There you go. That's how you set the drag. Well, some people on a open face, you push the button I mean, on the bait cast, when you push that button, it automatically frees up your line. And then sometimes you can just work it with your finger. A lot of people do it like that. Like I say, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever, whatever, whatever's comfortable for you, what works for you, <coughs> everything ain't for everybody. So I just got into bait casters. I've never been a real bait caster person, but the more I've been getting into it, the more I've been using it. You know, I've been getting into it more. But anyway, you don't have to be a genius to do this shit. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to set up a a swim bait. Show you what a swim bait is, and I'm gonna show you how to set up a plastic worm. So I use the fresh water. I usually use six. See, this is the cheapest line in Walmart right here. Don't let it fool you. The cheapest line in Walmart, I think it's like a dollar forty-seven, dollar seventy-four. 
but this is the cheapest line and it stretches so you can see my hand it's on the spool that line stretches you see that it stretches it's, it's called omni flex but six pound test line that'll fly across the river the ocean and six pounds is so light that it'll pick up anything like bite wise and i use eight pound tests that's fresh water though salt water i bump it up to 12 10 to 12 but you see still flex that's a good line it's cheap a lot of people don't buy it a lot of people don't know nothing about it <coughs> excuse me anyway so i'm gonna set the bait caster line up first and i'm gonna show you how to tie what i call my knot everybody got their own knots but i'm gonna do what works for me i'm gonna show you what works for me and if you know me you see my post see videos you see pictures and you see my kids a lot of things work for me because a lot of times i go where fish are at you know sometimes i have some days i get stumped there ain't nothing biting i don't always catch them so i don't always post videos but i very rarely go and don't catch them but anyway this is a bass hook. So sometimes you get big hooks, like for people that don't know, when you're going in the store buying hooks, that's a bass hook, right? That's a bullet and that's a weight. So what you would do to tie this on, you're gonna take the, the point part and stick your line through that first. So it's sitting like that. So again, you're gonna take the pointed part and stick that through first, right? That's how you're gonna do that. Then you're gonna get your hook and I'm just gonna tie a basic knot. It's a million knots out there. I'm just gonna show you how to tie mines. So you just stick it through the hoop, just like that. And what I do is I twist it about six or seven times, right? six or seven times and you're gonna have that little hole i don't know if you can see it right there you probably can zoom in and see it you're gonna stick the line right back through that hole once you're gonna pull it through and then you're gonna stick it right through there again the same the same hole you went through the first time stick it right back through the second time and when you pull it through it's gonna tighten that all the way down just like that so that that knot right there i'm gonna show you that's you see how strong that is that's the basic knot that I use, and it's fast. And I just take my knife, I thought I had some fighting nail clips, and I just cut the end right there. <coughs> so now, what happens is, you got the lead on, and you got the bass hook. That's bass fishing. That's just gonna free float like that back and forth, that's loose. So again, all you do is stick that line through there, that bullet weight, and then you tie your knot and that's gonna sit on there. So lastly, this is a blue culprit. This is a trick worm, not a trick worm, it's a speed worm. So it's a speed worm, this is what I like to use. Somebody put me on them a couple times, but they work for me. It might work for you. So you're gonna step the tip of that hook through the tip of the head. I'm gonna run that down a little. Not much, just a little. I'm gonna show you. Bring that out like that. And again, this is what works for me. This is what I do. Might not work for everybody else, but I pull that. You see that? I pull the head of that all the way up over that line like that. So when it drop down, that lead, that bullet weight lead, it's gonna fall right on top of that like that. See how that's sitting? <clears throat> Excuse me. But you're gonna stick that worm on the hook, right? You're gonna hide that in there like that. It's not perfect, but I'm just giving you an idea. You're gonna hide that in there, see? So that's how I'm gonna throw that in, just like that. Or you can bring it back down the way it's straighter. Either way, that's just like I like to do mine. Okay, so you see that. So that's kind of weedless also. So that can go like 
hooked on in the water. Just imagine it's hooked in the water and it's just going over things. That's because that hook is in the worm. And by the time you feel it, you'll get a bump when a fish hit it. If you feel that bump, once you feel that bump, then when you set the hook, and what I mean by set the hook is when you feel that bump, you might pause for a second and then pull back on the reel and set the hook. That means you feel a bump. That fish probably has the worm in his mouth. So when you set that hook, once you pull it hard, what's going to happen is that hook is going to come through just like that. And it's going to stick that fish. <coughs> so when it stick that fish, it's going to lock in like that. Most of the time, the worm come off. Sometimes the worm just come out like that right there. But that's what's going to happen when you set the hook. But again, that's just a quick setup. I'm just showing you what works for me. Again, <coughs> everything might not work for everybody. But once you get it down and you're doing what you like to do, it might work for you. And again, that's what I'm setting up on this. <clears throat> bait cast. <coughs> so that's one down. Okay. <coughs> God damn. I'm gonna have to edit this. Secondly, I'm gonna show you how to uh, tie on a swim bait. And what's a swim bait? Okay, so. And again, what works for me? Swim bait. This is a swim bait. This is a swim bait. This is also a swim bait. My opinion, this is a saltwater swim bait. It's a holographic. To me, this is probably the best swim bait they got in the water right now. This. You can get them at Dick's Sporting Goods, Bass Pro Shop, but you're not, Dick's Sporting Goods, or you can order them online at Strike Zone. Bass Pro Shops don't have this kind. They just came out with a kind like this. I just seen it. And how I'm gonna tie this on, just the same way. It already has lead in it, and it's big enough to where you don't have to put lead on the line. So I'm just using line and Six pound test line with the swim bait. I'm gonna tie the basic hook just like I tied a second ago. Turn her about six or seven times. That same hole. twice first time you go through second time pull it down tight again tight and cut the extra hanging off and it's called a swim bait because of the tail when you throw it out and you're reeling it back that tail is going from side to side it's going to flick just like that side to side like it's swimming in the water and that's how you tie a swim bait on Basic knot on the reel. So those are two things that I'm using tomorrow, but I'm trying to give you something that you could use also. And I'm, I got a lot of different things. Those would be a lot of different videos. I don't want to make the videos too long, especially while I'm coughing. <laughs> but anyway, I just showed you how to tie that on. One thing I do want to show is because a lot of people was asking me how to. And it's something I didn't even know how to use. But I'm going to show you that real quick. Hopefully that'll, uh, that'll get you right. It's how to put a bob stopper on. And what I mean by that is I'm going to show you. And again, like I say, man, I know everything ain't going to be politically correct on here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I mean by the bob stopper. Or, I mean, a slip cork. A drop cork, slip cork is what, you know, people call them. And what it is is these right here. When you see these in the store, that's what this is. 
It's a slip cord. What you do is you take your line and you run it through. You're gonna stick it through that end. Once you, this just the setup. Before you get it, you'll have everything hooked up and set up ready to go once you're done. But this is how you, I'm just gonna show you how to do it quick. You stick the line through. When you pull the line off of this, you're gonna slide that off. You're gonna slide that off like that. <coughs> Excuse me. The black part, you throw that away. Okay. So what happens is, once you done slid that off, you just pull both ends and tighten that down. You have to tighten it all the way down because you want to move that up and down. That's going to give you the depth where you want to fish at. Once you find out how deep the water is or how shallow, that's going to give you the depth right there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that right there. In that same pack, when you have those, those tiles, it's going to be like a ball. You put that ball on. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little green ball, like a little bead. You're gonna stick that line through that bead, right? That bead gonna slide right down. So that bead slides down to there. Wherever that tie on, that's where that bead's gonna go, right? I'm gonna show you all that's gonna work out in a second. And this is a cork. For those that don't know what a cork is, I'm gonna show you. A lot of times when you buy corks, I don't know if you can see, it's the middle is still like closed up. So you have to get something and push that through. Yeah, I ain't even got nothing to push it through. Okay, so sorry about that, I had to come back. But anyway, you're gonna get something. I usually have one in my tackle box, but. Okay. So you're gonna get that, and you're gonna push it through. You're gonna see it fall down. Okay, you see that part fell down, okay. Once you, once you open that hole up in the inside, now you can see it's a hole. Once you open that hole up, you're gonna get your line you gotta be careful when you sit it down because that, that green ball, sometimes that green ball will fall. Once that fall, you have to get a whole another one. And they don't, depending on the pack that you buy. But you're gonna stick the bigger end, you're gonna get the line first. And you're gonna seed that through. Once you seed that through, you wanna fill it through the cork. Now, once you pull it all the way through, I go ahead and I put the top part in. You see that? That locks that bead from going any further than from the top of the to the thread. So then you put the bottom part of the cork on. But you're going to see that one through with the bottom. The smaller end. You're going to run that down. And then when I run that down, I just stick the bottom part in. So now the cork is on the line. So then what'll happen is you're gonna get a split shot, which is, let me show you what a split shot is. These are split shots, right? That's a split shot. They have split shots that's all around, but I use the ones with the, with the lips on the end, the kissing lips. That's because you can take them on and off sometimes. And what you can do, you just bite it. I, I don't have no pliers on it, so I'm gonna bite that on and open it up. And you just put that, see how much line I have. I'm not just, I'm not gonna set it up for what I wanna do, but I'm just showing you how to do it. You get some pliers and pinch it down, bite down on it, however, I just pinch that one down and close it. And so what happens is, once you do that, <coughs> You can tie your hook off. I'm just getting a regular, regular hook just to put on here. 
I only use these when I'm spec fishing. So that's a spec hook. Some people use bigger ones, but that's a spec hook right there. Same, same basic knot that's quick fix. In through the loop. Pull tight, loose in, cut it. Okay, so now you'll see exactly what I mean. So just imagine, when, once you drop your bait in the water, if you got a worm or a minnow, whatever you're fishing with, it's gonna be on the bottom. That weight is holding that cork in place. So you can measure the depth of how deep you wanna fish or how shallow, either one. All you have to do is move this. So say like, if this is the depth, this is the water. That's gonna come up to the top of the water and hold that like that. It's not gonna go no, go no further than that. So the more, <coughs> excuse me, the more you raise that line up, the more you pull that line up, that's deeper now. So that's gonna come up and that's gonna stop there now. You see what I'm saying? So you get an idea of what I mean. Now that's how you set that up, which is not a bad way of fishing, but I mainly fish like that when I'm spec fishing. So that's just another thing that I do that works for me. And again, a lot of this stuff, like I say, work when you're fishing like where fish are. If you ain't fishing where fish at, I mean, it's hard to catch fish when fish not biting and fish not there, period. But anyway, my last little thing I'm gonna show you real quick is when you spec fishing. I'm gonna show you what works for me. This is a crappy hook. It's called a crappy magic. You find them in Walmart, like two ninety six a box. That's how that looks right there. And it's, you can, I mean, bass will hit it, you know, brim sometimes hit it, whatever. But I'm just saying for spec fishing, this is what I use. Electric chickens. That's the color, electric chickens. But some days different colors might work. Some days different colors won't work. But this is always gonna work. And so what you do with this is you run the hook you get a good idea what that look like. That set up right there, probably six, seven dollars in Walmart. <clears throat> so that definitely works. So you run that hook right through the middle, just like that. You're gonna bring it out through the ass end, but on the top part of the pink. Try to keep it in the middle. You're gonna pull that through like that, and that's how you have that. That's what attract the fish. But that's that's a, a a spec setup right there. This is what you call a jig. When people say they jigging, that works. And again, we'll tie that on the same way. Run that through six, seven times. So whichever works for you. You're gonna tie it through the first hole and back through the first hole. There you go. Boom. So that's a jig. Jig head. And the reason I use six pound test line, like this right here, I would use six pound test line. You got some big specs out there, what they call black crappy, white crappy. But that little jig does, it's like a one eighth. It's a one eighth, one eighth ounce. That, you can throw that out far enough with light line. Heavy line is not gonna go that far. Light line is gonna go out far. Just giving you an idea. So that's gonna conclude my video for today as far as showing what works. Everything, and I'm being truthful, everything that I just showed you right now that works dam fishing lake fishing river fishing stream fishing 
bass fishing, ponds, speck fishing. So I'm gonna show you some more things that work. Might not work for you the first time you go, second time. You might have to find something else that you can get yourself into. And you can do it like that. I'll do more reviews on Mo Jigs. I mean, I got a tackle box full of stuff that I can go through. I'm just giving you a rundown of what works for me. And I'm guaranteed that it'll probably work for you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna show you the things that I just had. So you can get an idea. You want to go buy them. It's what you need right here. Speed worm. Happy jig heads. It don't have to necessarily be this color. I just like that color. You can have pink ones, orange ones. The pink ones work real good too. But I like these. Uh, Metro chickens. These are watermelon seeds. Watermelon seed worm. This is a trick worm. <clears throat> Looks like a regular worm, but it, this is a trick worm. Watermelon seed. That has been very successful in my days. And this is a white house fly. These work well when, you know, the water's a little, a little murky, but you know, they work pretty decent. But as far as the video, man, that's all I was showing today, man. Stay tuned, subscribe, like the video, share the video, turn on post notifications if you want to. I'll be back. Like I said, I got a couple more videos to upload with some more things, but for now, that's gonna end the video. Dab on them fools. <laughs>